from amassing 2.9 million subscribers and collaborating with the likes of PewDiePie, iDubs, and The Odd Ones Out, all the way to losing 200,000 subscribers, coupled with a comment section painting him as a dangerous predator. The mystery around a once YouTube legend has more questions than it does answers, with the once beloved creator completely disappearing from the internet, only leaving a path of allegations and alleged victims in his trail. Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. I create weekly YouTube documentaries, and today we'll be taking a dive into the abandoned career of a once respected YouTube star, Boy in a Band, also known as simply Dave. We'll go through how he rapidly became a renowned YouTube legend, the events that led up to his sudden disappearance from the platform, and the gradual decay of the empire he had left behind. From his very first upload on the 28th of June 2008, titled Tutorial Making an Epic Translate Effect in Reason, it was evident that Dave possessed a combination of knowledge about music products and a keen eye for presentation that was extremely difficult to find on the platform at the time. This makes sense when you account for his role as a technical backbone and member of indie UK rock band You and What Army, which was formed only a year prior. Dave started his YouTube channel as a side project to promote his band and website, but that would quickly change as the years went on, the first sign of which would come on the 12th of July 2009, with his vlog Boy in a Band Blog 1, Choose Your Tutorial, 7 Day Song, and Glitch Hop. Although he didn't have his trademark red hairstyle yet, Dave still had his usual goofy fun-loving personality that drew viewers in. This video also foreshadowed three main traits that later contributed to his success on YouTube, a good intuition for music production, a likeable personality, and a longing to share his knowledge with others. Oh, hi guys, I'm Dave from boyinabands.com. Well, I say guys, apparently 20% of my viewers are girls, so to them, hey ladies, welcome to my studio. Well, I say my studio, it is like any self-respecting studio, an absolute mess. This is my real studio. As he continued to create more tutorials, he would gain a reputation for being a reliable source of musical insight on music-related topics on YouTube. It was this very reputation that earned him many notable collaborations, one of the first being a pop song with a fellow music YouTuber, Vila. The song was made in 24 hours and was posted on the 22nd of May 2013. Hi, I'm Dave from Boy in the Band. I've heard people say that they think music in the charts these days is really simple, and that a singer and a producer could get together in a studio and knock out a generic number one hit single for the clubs in like a day. Let's see if they're right. Yo, we up in this club, club. We gonna get drunk, drunk. Girls, shake them hum, hum. Some lovely lady long, so put your hands up in the air. The video was a hit with fans and gained almost 2 million views. By the 15th of July 2014, Dave would be involved in another major music project, this time with Emma Blackery. It would once again surpass the 1 million view mark and begin the formation of what would later become his core fan base, Emotional Teenagers. Today, Whilst entertaining and beautifully performed, the song spoke to deeper issues like mental health, depression, and loneliness, all of which were relevant to Dave's teen audience, topics that went widely as talked about back in the early 2010s. These themes would gradually become a dark and pervasive part of Dave's online persona and brand, which will be brought up in a different light later on the video. For now, Dave was entering a new phase in his career, as his band announced that they'd be going on an indefinite hiatus from the 10th of July 2014. Although they had already released an EP, had several live performances, and were voted the third best unsigned act in Rock Sound magazine, it seemed like their time together was at an end. But that didn't matter to Dave, as his next major song launched him into the YouTube Hall of Fame. On the 2nd of February 2015, Dave made YouTube history with his music video, Don't Stay in School, that, as the name suggests, questioned the effectiveness of the school system and highlighted many issues that plagued it. I wasn't taught how to get a job. But I can remember dissecting a frog I wasn't taught how to pay tax But I know loads about Shakespeare's classics I was never taught how to vote They devoted that time to defining isotopes I wasn't taught how to look after my health But mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell Never spent a lesson on current events Instead, I studied the old American West. I was never taught what laws there are. I was never taught what laws there are. Let me repeat, I was not taught the laws for the country I live in. But I know how Henry VIII killed his women. Divorce, beheaded, died. Divorce
Up until that point, David released a number of music videos that were received very well, but this single upload overshadowed them all. Currently, the video sits at an astonishing 47 million views, 1.5 million likes, and 200,000 comments. Millions upon millions of people were introduced to Dave, and apparently they liked what they saw. Hundreds of reaction channels made videos on Dave's latest upload, and it was being shared across other social media platforms like Reddit and Facebook. That being said, there were those who didn't look too kindly on the video. Hi, I'm Dave from Boy in a Band. Today we're going to look at some of the don't stay in school hate comments, and also some of the nice and constructively critical ones too, so my fragile self-esteem doesn't get shattered. This has been a freaking surreal few weeks. I released my song Don't Stay in School and 5 million views on Facebook later. It seems a few of you guys agree with me, and ah, it's freaking cult out here. Screw this. They are much better, but not everyone agreed with its message that the school syllabus is flawed. It was a slightly contentious issue. I'm soft-serving it. Someone posted it to Reddit, and that day it was at the top of the controversial page for the entire freaking website. Clearly this shows it's something we need to discuss. Hate comments and criticism aside, there were those in the academic system that took the concerns Dave brought forward to heart and decided to make a few necessary changes. One message really stood out because this person's school actually listened. Don't stay in school is changing our school. So many of his students shared it on Facebook and Twitter and some even emailed it to the head of the school and now we're having an assembly tomorrow to discuss what we want to learn about and how the school can help that. So I was like, this is amazing. I need to find out more and tell everyone. So I Skyped her. Hi. How's it going? Would you care to recap roughly what has gone on on your end? Right, a load of students from my school had been sharing and posting your video, Don't Stay in School. It actually got sent round on email to a couple of teachers and it got noticed by them. We've had assemblies and we've talked about it in form. The lyrics have been sent round to everyone. We've even had proper discussions discussing what we want to sort out, what we want to substitute. Dave's musical masterpiece had sparked serious conversation about whether or not the school system needed to change. And even though it didn't cause monumental societal change, it still had a positive impact on both students and teachers. Unfortunately, that positivity didn't quite reach David himself. On the 9th of July 2015, Dave posted a video with a striking title, I Hate Myself, wherein he discussed his recent self-loathing and struggles with finding motivation to be productive despite his astronomical growth. I actually haven't posted a video since March and I haven't even freaking tweeted since mid-May and it's weird because I've been having the most success I've ever had in my life and the least motivation to do anything. When I was planning to make this video, I kept thinking, how can I make this more shareable or how can I make it more relatable and useful? And I think it specifically shouldn't be. I want you to understand me a bit better and I feel like if I try to make this more shareable or relatable, then I might not get across accurately what I'm feeling. He went on to describe his frequent emotional detachment and his experience going to a therapist to help solve the problem. While there was progress, Dave felt that he was in uncharted waters. So eventually, after therapy and a lot of reading, I came to a conclusion. I want to deal with the fundamental issue of me hating myself into working to see if that makes me more consistent and happy. And this is the first time I've tried to address this issue of hating myself into proactivity. So I've been trying to figure out what I value and can I use another method to motivate myself other than self-hatred. Because as it stands, right now, deep down, I still hate myself. But the rational part of my brain is getting much better at caring for myself like I would care for another person that was having this kind of problem. This is a fundamental change to my personality, so I don't expect it to be quick and I haven't figured this out yet, but I am slowly starting to get myself into a routine of working not based on self-hatred, which is how I've released this video. He would close out the video with an open and honest message about how unsure he is about this new part of his life. I actually wrote here in the notes for this video to come up with a strong ending, but I think that's part of the problem. I it, the real life is messy. If you got anything from this video, brilliant, but there is no obvious message. I don't know where this is going yet, and I will keep you informed. I will do my best to. Now that I've explained this, I feel a lot more comfortable that you understand why I'm doing this. I will try to post on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and everything more frequently to keep you updated with how I'm getting on and as soon as I am ready, I will post videos again. Hopefully, much more consistently, because I don't hate myself. Cheers for watching and have a nice day.
Naturally, his fanbase made their support for Dave quite clear, with comments such as, Dave, you're a beautiful human. You're more intelligent and self-aware than most people are even capable of comprehending. As well as, take your time, Dave. Being mentally healthy is way more important than videos for us. I'll wait for your content. Whether your next video is next month or next year, I love you. Internet hug. Fans would certainly have to wait, as Dave made one more upload on the 10th of August 2015, before completely disappearing from the platform for exactly one year. This was the first time Dave had been off YouTube for so long, but it wouldn't be the last. By the 10th of August 2016, Dave made his return with a music video dubbed I'm Not Dead, which was meant to express his mental battles that he'd gone through over the past year-long break. In the months that followed, Dave maintained a somewhat consistent upload schedule, and many of those uploads would do very well. Well. Some gained a few hundred thousand and others got several million views. Dave hadn't lost any of the momentum that he'd built up in the years prior, and in fact, his stability was increasing. By October of 2017, Dave would join forces with iDubs during his Content Cop series in order to create a diss track on Rice Gum. At the time, the video went completely viral, and a large portion of the people that viewed the video went over to Dave's channel to see what else he had created. Unfortunately, the song was later deleted, and Dave had to give an apology for the harsh things he said about rice gum. After a brief break in early 2018, Dave made his way back to YouTube and attended VidCon, where he had the opportunity to further network with other well-known creators. As you'd expect, this resulted in collaborations with other creators that also wanted to make their own music videos, the first of which being the song Empty that was made alongside Jaden Animations, one of the most popular animated storytime creators on the platform. Topics like anorexia and bulimia were a prominent part of the song's message and showcased Jaden's own feelings about the issues being discussed. The song was adored by fans, and the behind the scenes was posted to Boy in a Band's YouTube channel, where it received over 14 million views. Dave's next hit song was with James from The Odd Ones Out, another large storytime animator. The song was titled Life is Fun, featuring James' upbeat personality contrasted with Dave's dark outlook on life. The project completely dwarfed all of Dave's other collaborations, with the video gaining over 150 million views. As incredible as this achievement was, it would soon be surpassed by his collaboration with PewDiePie on his congratulations song, with the video garnering over 230 million views. Dave had done it. He managed to cement himself in YouTube history with not just one hard-hitting song, but several. His networking, production, and musical skills took him from making beat tutorials on YouTube all the way to producing hit songs with some of the largest creators on the platform. So where did he go from here? What did Dave do with this newly built empire? Well, not much actually. He was still fighting a war with his mind, and as the years went on, his uploads started to dwindle. Although he assisted in creating lyrics for PewDiePie's Mine All Day music, the uploads would stop in December of 2019. The last remaining interaction between Dave and his fans on YouTube was a community post where he asked his viewers to vote whether or not he should take all his medication at once. Where 94% of the 170,000 votes told him not to do it. The last known posts on his Twitter and Instagram were made on the 7th of April 2021. If things ended here for Dave, it would have been perfectly fine. A well-respected YouTuber that left the internet due to mental strain would have been somewhat a good way to end things. But unfortunately for Dave, things weren't that simple. On the 7th of September 2022, an anonymous Reddit user made a post on r slash boy in a band that brought some radically chilling allegations against Dave to light. Quoting, Some time ago, a group of his ex-partners wrote a letter to his family in hopes of stopping the outgoing pattern of a bee. Below, you can read that letter. What followed was a letter that alleged some incredibly dark patterns of behavior Dave engaged in for several years with numerous partners that, quote, led to many horrific and dangerous situations that included years of lies, manipulations, and emotional, financial, and physical, and even sexual abuse of many young girls. They went on to recount Dave's polyamorous relationship style and history of dating girls much younger than him. The chief example presented was a girl named Rachel that was a fan of his band and later became a part of Dave's musical projects. Apparently, she fell in love with Dave after attending one of his live performances, and the two ended up having relations together. There was even a clip on Dave's YouTube channel of the 17-year-old girl seeing the lyrics quoting, Take me without my consent, unquote. They also detailed his methods of preying on unsuspecting fans, and his problems with medication misuse, p-word addiction, and disgusting interest on people aged between 11 and 14. It was also alleged that he used his depression as a weapon to gain control over the girls who 
was with, and would also show the same manipulative behavior to his close friends and former bandmates. The post would end with the following statement. Below you can find a little bit of proof of how he treated people, confirmed and proven by multiple of his ex-girlfriends and friends that he'd hurt and replaced over the years. We know that you care about the persona he made for himself on the internet. He destroys people. We know this is hard. We never wanted to do this, but what about those girls? What about future ones? They're people. This needs to stop. He needs to be stopped. Please. The proof that was presented at the bottom of the video were cropped out screenshots of conversations between the alleged, and while it's possible that these are genuine, it's equally likely that they aren't. To say that the fallout from this post was shocking would be a gross understatement. Hundreds of people in the subreddit argued over the legitimacy of the claims presented. Some said there wasn't any concrete evidence provided beyond screenshots and ruled out the post as an attempt to gain clout that made similarly disparaging claims about Dave's past. Once the alleged misdeeds of Dave reached YouTube, the community would see a blaze of videos that detailed the contents of the letter coupled with their thoughts on the matter. The entire controversy even spawned memes about how Dave quote wasn't taught what laws there are. Although humorous, this spoke just to how much of a contrast there was between Dave's online persona when in comparison to his alleged behavior in real life. Many did take issue with the easily falsifiable evidence presented to support the letter. Why was there no conversation between Dave and the alleged victims if they numbered in the double digits? Was it all just a product of a vindictive individual from Dave's past? Or was this the real Dave that was hidden from us for over a decade? We'll probably never know. What we do know is that unless some new information is brought to light, then the reputation and image that Dave painstakingly built will be forever tarnished and left to rot in the face of these unanswered allegations. The undertones of depression and emotional turmoil that were the inspiration for Dave's music also became the reason he disappeared. During his time in the limelight, Dave was a guiding hand in the YouTube music community and seemed to have a genuine desire to help people create their own amazing music. It's very possible that Dave may never return to YouTube to put these allegations to rest. The real reason behind them may never truly be known given Dave's disappearance from the internet and the fact that the accusers are anonymous. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in future updates, make sure you subscribe